Hey, welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials and today is all about using the mixer window. Now normally in this channel we go over stuff you can customize in Reaper, but admittedly not everybody gets as hot and bothered as I do by the prospect of burning a couple vacation days reassigning hotkeys. So the good news for those kind of people today is that everything I'm about to show you is default behavior in Reaper, so you don't need to customize anything you lazy bastards. Now let's get into it. So to open your mixer window you can go up here to view and then here's your mixer or you can use the hotkey command and M or for PCs control and M to open your mixer. Now remember command and M cause you can also use it to quickly show and hide the mixer. Zip, zap, zoinks, just like that. Now there's two common ways people use the mixer window. Some people just use it as a digital mixing console, right? Get all your controls in front of you and go to town. It's good for live sound and really for like using your ears if that's what you're into. And I got my effects browser right here for a quick plugin adage and I can resize it by left dragging on the borders over here and I can also resize my mixer up and down from here. If I go on this side, you can see that both the window edges move together, but if I hover my mouse over here where the green line shows up and double click, boom, this will now extend the mixer all the way to the end of my window. If you wanna go back to how it was, boom, double click right here. Alternatively, you can use the mixer window as kind of like a track inspector, like you would find maybe in Logic Pro X. It won't take as much space, so it's more suitable for editing and arranging. So go down here to where it says mixer, and I can command click and drag the window around, and we'll see this faint gray line appear wherever this is going to go when I let go of the mouse. So it can go up here, or you can go to this side, or you can go above here, but let's not do anything rash and just put it on the left side of our window, and we're gonna resize it until only the master track and one more track is showing. Finally, just right click on the master track and make sure scroll view when tracks activated is ticked and Bob's your uncle, we got ourselves a track inspector. So any track I click on will show up here, snare top, my room mics, etc. We can always see the master track, we can see our tracks insert and sense from here, and we can always see our meters, bish, bash, bosh. Of course, we don't need to settle on one or the other because I can have one screen set with the track inspector and then just switch to this other screen set where it's taken up half the screen and I got my effects browser here. If you don't know how to use screen sets, link in the old description because we've already gone over it in a lot of detail. But anyway, let's just work with this for now. So within the mixer view, other than resizing the whole window, we can also resize our fader and meter size by dragging the divider between the fader and effect slots. I can bring this up to get a bigger meter and fewer effect slots and sense. And if you hold command, you will resize everything all together. Like whoop. So I think I'm okay with seeing maybe four or five sends and six-ish plugin slots. And now I have bigger meters. On my master track, I'll make the fader smaller so I can see my nice loves meter. And quickly, if you want some loves love, basically just put the JS loudness meter on your track. It comes with Reaper. And then just right click on it and go show embedded UI in MCP. So all right, now that we're comfortable, let's get into some hot hotkey action. So you probably already know that you can temporarily group anything in Reaper by just selecting a number of tracks. So if I select these two tracks, I can move their faders together. I can double click to reset any fader or knob to the zero value or to unity gain. I can also mute them or solo them together, all that jazz. And even if their levels aren't the same to start, they just move together. So we knew all of that, but when you have a bunch of tracks selected, if you want to move the fader on just one of them without losing that selection, you can hold shift and now you can move that fader independently. Then as soon as you let go of shift, you go back to having them grouped together. You can also hold option to audition a fader. And the way that works is I can hold option on Mac or Alt on PC and I can move the fader. And if I just let go of the mouse, it'll just snap back to where it was before. But if I'm happy with the change, I'll just let go of the Alt key and then let go of the mouse and that value will stick. So it's very useful if you're a paranoid mixer, just kind of hear the change without losing whatever level it was set at before. So once again, in case I went too fast the last time, I can hold option and make a change I'm unsure about. Then I can let go of the mouse and it'll just go back to where it was. Or if I'm happy with my new settings, I let go of the option key and then let go of the mouse and it'll just stay there. But don't be paranoid because you can also always use the trusty command and Z to go back to where it was before. So just chill. On any fader knob, if you hold command, you will get into fine control. So it'll move a lot more slowly, allowing you to make more precise adjustments. Let's bust out the effects browser now. Again, you can go to view and then to the effects browser, or you can just press shift and F. 
And remember that you can just double click here to extend the mixer. And if I want to add a plugin to a bunch of tracks, I can just select all of them, find my plugin, then right click on it and go add to select the tracks. And here they are. Or you can also copy plugins from other tracks just by dragging. So I can grab this EQ and just drag it to another track. Maybe grab the compressor too, just like that. So that's just left dragging. And if I hold option while dragging, it'll take it off the track and move it to the other track just like that. With command, you can duplicate a plugin on its own track. So normally if I just drag this down, it'll just change the order of my plugins. So now the EQ is after the compressor or vice versa, but by holding command, I can duplicate any plugin on its own chain. Option click on any plugin to delete it. And if you want to delete all the plugins from the track, you can just hold option and click on the effects icon down here, and that'll get rid of all of them together. Shift clicking will bypass plugins and then shift click again to unbypass them and command and shift will take the plugin offline and then command shift and left click again to bring it back online. And same deal as before. If you want to bypass the entire chain, then just click on the right side of the effects icon down here. And you can probably guess that you can also duplicate a whole effects chain to another track by just dragging from the effects icon. And if you do it while holding option, it'll just take them off this track and put them on this track. So sorry if all of that was hella obvious. You're probably already seeing that once you get into plugins, they can kind of become a nuisance. They're like opening all over the screen and shit, getting in your way. So one cool thing you can do is to right click on the edges of an effects window and go dock effects window in Docker. And of course it goes somewhere random. So let's again hold command and drag on the title bar. I'm just gonna dock it on this side here. Make it a little bigger, something like that. And now bear with me on this, open preferences and go down to plugins. And there are some options here to make our plugin windows way more manageable. I like having only allow one effects chain window open at a time, as well as these next two options ticked, open track effects window on track selection change, and then do that only if the effects window is open. So with these three options all enabled, we get a very neat workflow. We can click on any track and the effects window for that track will just pop up right here. Click on any other track and it'll be replaced. And if you don't want the automatic changing, just go back to preferences and untick these two boxes. And that way when I select another track, nothing happens. But if I click on a track's effects window, it'll just pop up right here. So all the plugins will open in one place and never somewhere random on the screen, kind of obstructing your view. But be warned that this works best with default plugins or anything that automatically resizes. Because if you have third-party plugins where the UI doesn't fit here, it won't automatically resize when it's docked. So you may get a bit of the UI cut off and that can be annoying, but otherwise play ball. All right, let's quickly go over routing too. I can drag from the routing icon on any track to any other, like the drums reverb, and that'll create a send here and open it for me. Or I can also drag from any of the empty slots directly to any track, and there's our send again. We can also select a bunch of tracks and then holding shift, we can drag to any unselected track and that'll send from all of them to that track. Similarly, if you want to make multiple sends from one track to multiple tracks, you can select them. For example, I'm selecting my guitar plate and guitar verb here and then holding shift and dragging from any unselected track will create two sends from that track as you can see. One to the guitar plate and one to the reverb. Now, when you make a send, we can see this little line here. And again, that works like any other knob. Move it up and down, add command to get a finer control, blah, blah, blah. But check this out. If I hold shift, instead of adjusting the send volume, I'll be adjusting the send pan, which is actually super useful in a situation like this. Like here, my guitars are spread left and right. So I can hold shift and have my left guitars go to the right side of the reverb and vice versa. Let's have these go to the left of the send, just like that. Awesome. Once you have a send, that works like plugins too. Drag it from one track to another and that will copy it. Option clicking will delete them. Shift click to mute them. And of course, shift double clicking will set the send pan back to zero. Very nice. So that's a bunch of hidden mouse modifiers for the mixer window, some preferences. And actually most of these you won't be able to customize, so you might as well learn them. If I went too fast, watch the video one more time. And of course, as per huge, post your questions in the comments below. If you like the work I do, you can support the channel through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. A huge thanks to everyone supporting the channel. Thank you, Jeremy Doe, for the biggest one-time donation to the channel ever. I really appreciate it. But for now, I gotta go. Love you, bye.